Okay, um, <clears throat> this is the uh, regular Woodbridge Board of Finance monthly meeting for Thursday, uh, May 16th, 2013. And um, before we start our agenda, I would just like to observe a, uh, a moment of silence for our, our uh, dear friend Ed Sheehy. Of course, we all know he passed away on uh, April 22nd. And uh, I sat in the seat next to him for the past seven years, and I've been in meetings with him for the past 25. And uh, he'll, he will be sorely missed, and if you don't mind, a moment's silence. <coughs> Thank you. Okay, we have uh, tonight with us uh, acting, no, you're not acting, you are first. First select woman, Beth Heller, and we have, uh, what did you say? First select, first select, select woman, select elect. elect right. Ellen Scalatar, and congratulations to Ellen. <laughs> we all look very much forward to working with you. And congratulations to all uh, elected officials who, who were elected in the last uh, election. We, uh, the Board of Finance, I'm sure we look forward to working with all of you. So uh, I think we had a good, uh, a good group of people who were elected, so it should be an exciting two years. Okay, any public comments? Director of Finance, Anthony. Thank you. The uh, report, monthly report for uh, through April of 2013 is a projected year-end budgetary surplus of $232,000. And uh, that represents uh, $4.76 million fund balance, or 10.54% of our budget. So we're about 10.5% on our fund balance. And uh, a couple of uh, new revenue highlights for you to share. First, that we received some large back tax collections that we've been working on for quite a while. And uh, there were two of them. And so that generates a surplus in taxes of about $130,000. So they were, they were two large ones. And uh, <clears throat> so that, that's positive news. Um, we have um, about a $50,000 surplus in grant revenue that's projected. And that's largely due to that one-time distribution we received from the uh, revenue sharing program earlier in the year. In department revenues, we have a shortfall projected of about $62,000. Uh, our conveyance fees, town clerk fees, and billing permits, and transfer station fees are all trending ahead of budget and um, are collectively projected to generate a surplus of about $63,000. However, our uh, golf revenues as of the end of April were uh, projected as a <coughs> fall of $125,000. That's up from last month because April proved to be weather-wise not as uh, they had hoped or as we had hoped. However, since that time, it's been uh, much better and um, we're hoping that we can recover most if not all of that in the month of May. So um, we will certainly share that with you when we have the May results. And finally, uh, Amity is their surplus there of $85,000. On the other side, waste management will have a surplus this year of about $40,000 due to reduced tonnage in that department and recycling and solid waste. Hurricane Sandy, we have uh, been approved for a payment of $309,000, and that's 75% of our exposure. Most of the public works debris removal, $217,000. Uh, $69,000 for public safety, which is police, police primarily. And $23,000 for volunteer services, which is primarily the fire department. So um, we have been received, approved for all of that and received the appropriate paperwork. We have also uh, begun the process with Storm Nemo. And um, the uh, expenses and overtime of contracted services for plowing and snow removal are being uh, tabulated and um, the FEMA has awarded 75% reimbursement for all expenses for a 72 hour period. So, um, and it's a 72 hour period of our choice. And so we are com uh, compiling that information and we hope to have that completed in June. Tony, can you remind me in terms of the FEMA reimbursement for Hurricane Sandy? Where does that revenue actually show up? So what we do is we've, we um, put that revenue in our grant um, our miscellaneous grants account or our grant fund that we have for um, 
uh, for uh, grant revenue that is not budgeted. Okay. And then we transfer the um, transfer the the monies to expenses. The last meeting to cover that. So okay. um, so that's how that will be accounted for. So you should be able to follow that in the yep. attachment. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Um, next to the Woodbridge Board annual monthly report. I guess you, you can cover that, Sandy, in your report. Sure. Okay. And uh, Monday, of course, May 20th is our annual town meeting. Um, and uh, immediately following that meeting, we will meet to set the mill rate. Uh, so, new forum. So, make sure we get there. Start at 7:30. And based on past experience, it doesn't last very long because right. not many people come. But you never know. Anything else, Tom? Nope, that's it. Okay. I would just like to mention under this, not that it's under Tony's report, but <clears throat> not knowing who's even going to be on the board, but our July 18th meeting, uh, we're going to change it to July 25th because a certain member of the Board of Finance has tickets for the Eagles and uh, can't miss that. So, okay. Yeah. I've, never, I've never done it before, but I, thought I got them for my birthday and uh, it's probably the hardest ticket to get in the state of Connecticut right now. All right, so um, could you repeat that again? It's the following Thursday. Instead of July 18th, it'll be July 25th. Okay. Thank you. And there's not much on the July agenda. Anyway, so. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Funding requests. <clears throat> Our first funding request is a line item transfer. Um, this has to be, this is part of that donation, the $3,000 donation we get from the Bethwood Baseball League every year for the purchase of clay, et cetera, for the ball fields. They donate $3,000, and basically what we're doing is we're taking $1,500 of that to spend on the uh, on the ball field. So I will move acceptance of land and transfer 1213-30 in the amount of $1,500. Second. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Next is an also a natural uh, a line item transfer 1213-31, and it's the transfer of money remaining in the oil heating account to the natural gas for the center building in the amount of 2700 So again, it's just a, a formality. So I will move acceptance of line item transfer 1213-31 <coughs> in the amount of $2,700. Second. Any discussion on that? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I assume you're starting to get a handle on gas yeah. working out, I'm sure, right? It is, cool. yeah, definitely. It's working out at the church, wow. Okay, next is a request for funding uh, from our contingency fund for natural gas for the center building. Uh, again, it's in the amount of $9,300, and I will move acceptance of request for funding 1213-32 in the amount of $9,300. Second. And I'll explain yeah, this. Yeah. So, yeah. so but at the beginning of the year, you can see it on your uh, sheet here, we transferred $35,000 uh, for natural gas conversion from a series of oil accounts. And we had to estimate at that time when we were going to do the installation of the, uh, of the uh, equipment and how much oil we would actually use. And so in the case of the center building and of the firehouse, the installation was later than we had anticipated. Thus, we used more oil than we thought we would. So, as a result, we had to, you know, cover that um, shortfall. But essentially, what it's essentially a pass-through, um, but really, it's funding the equipment conversion. But at that time, we thought maybe we would have it in the in the oil account. So, hopefully, that makes sense. And why were those delayed? Well, we, we did them um, just for a, a few reasons, but we did do them uh, in-house the installations. So uh, while we saved a lot of money on the install, it took a little longer than we thought they would. Yeah. Okay. Some of the, what's the new equipment, Sandy, that had to be put in in the delivery time, unfortunately, from the vendors was a little longer. And that was another issue. Oh, okay. The delivery of the equipment took longer than we thought, yeah. That's right. Okay. <coughs> Anything else? All those in favor? Aye. You and I, Andy? Aye. <laughs> <laughs> Me. Is that unanimous? 
Uh, and our final re final request, which I'm sure Tony will explain to us also, it's pretty cut and dry again, is a request for funding 1213-33 in the amount of 20200 from our contingency to the fire department for oil heating because they have not hooked up to gas yet. So Tony Right, and they're not that. hooked up to gas yet, right. and it, that's a more uh, difficult, we're planning to do that in the next month or two? Correct. And uh, that proved to be a little more challenging because of the uh, equipment is much newer and the, um, and the, the hookup is much more challenging. Yeah. So, so you were anticipating this happening during the year, right? That didn't so count for a lot of this. Yeah. Okay. yeah. The other problem is the technology in that building is so much higher level. And we don't have a town engineer, so we need to get that's somebody that's to help us. Out. Right. That's, that's way issue. over my smarts in gas. Okay. Right, so we can't really do a lot of that in-house. So I, I didn't make a motion on it, did I? No. So I'll, I'll move uh, acceptance of request for funding 1213-33 in the amount of 20200 Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And that takes care of our... So we have about 14676 left on Right. One of the uh, transfers you'll see next month was, if you remember, in the budget process, we removed the vestibule funding for recreation. Mm -hmm. And so we're um, currently getting that information for next month. Do you think we might have sufficient funds to be able oh, yeah. to do that? Yes, absolutely. That's great. Okay. Now we have a whole series of minutes to approve, huh? <laughs> you really expect us to remember back that far, huh? <laughs> 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 okay, the first set of minutes is um, our joint Board of Select and Board of Finance meeting, which is probably capital budget, right? And it's from Thursday, November 29th, 2012. Uh, and I'll move acceptance of the minutes of the Thursday, June 29th, 2012 meeting as presented. Second. Any uh, corrections, adjustments? Which one is this? This is November 29th. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Mike abstains. Next is uh, another capital budget No, I was there, though. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm now looking this over. I, I was there. You were there? I was there. I, I specifically remember the fire commission uh, presentation. All right, so we'll correct that, and Mike will vote yes. <laughs> when he likes it or not. <clears throat> okay. Next is the December 4th capital budget meeting, um, and I'll move acceptance of the minutes of the Tuesday, November 4th, 2012 capital budget meeting as presented. <clears throat> I'll second. Any corrections, adjustments uh, to that? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain. I think you read that one? December 4th? Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah, okay. I abstain. Okay. Next is Thursday, January 24th, which was one of our joint meetings on the budget. And <clears throat> I will move acceptance of the minutes of the Thursday, January 24th, 2013 budget meeting as presented. Any discussion or adjustments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. We got that one, Mike. Okay, good. <laughs> Next is Tuesday, January 29th. Again, it was a budget hearing. And I will move acceptance of the minutes of the Tuesday, January 29th, 2013 budget meeting uh, as presented. Second. Any corrections, adjustments, etc. on this? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Unanimous. Next is Thursday, January 31st. Uh, again, a joint meeting on the budget. And I'll move acceptance of the minutes of Thursday, January 31st, 2013 is presented. Second. Any uh, discussion or adjustments on these? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Next is our regular monthly meeting of April 18th. Uh, I'll move acceptance of the minutes of April 18th as presented. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 
Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain. Abstain. And finally, and this is our uh, budget hearing. Um, at which time we uh, approve the preliminary budget. And I will move acceptance of the minutes of the Monday, April 22nd, a very fateful day, 2013, as presented. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Okay. All right, next. <clears throat> next is the preliminary suspense list prepared by our tax collector. And um, again, I'm sure we all heard that this is a, by state statute, these have to go into what are called suspense, but by no means are they forgiven. Uh, our tax collector continues to pursue these actively, but they must go into suspense again by state statute. So I'll move acceptance of the uh, attached suspense list. Just for a few minutes. This is oh, it is? Next month. Next month. Oh, okay, yeah, there is a place for us. Okay, yeah. this is just enough. Okay, so we'll talk about this next year. Next, next month. <laughs> this is total. Do we have total on here? No, it's just each section. Yeah, not much. Yeah. Mostly motor, it's all motor vehicle, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah, personal property. Personal property. Okay, Tony, appointment of orders. So, um, as you, every year, you, as you know, you act as the um, audit committee, and we have to appoint an auditor for the state of Connecticut, and so we would recommend that you appoint the Gladrian Pullen as our auditor. It's their four, um, fourth year in our bid process that we did bid the auditor last year, so this is their last year. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, I think we should definitely go out to bid. It's yeah, so we'll go out to bid again and see what that so results. So this would be for the year end of June 30, 2013. 13, right. Okay. Yeah, so next year we should go out to bid. Yeah. So you want a motion? Yes. Okay, I'll, make, I'll move that we appoint uh, McFadry and Pullen as our auditors for the fiscal year ended uh, June 30th, 2013. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And uh, Madam First Select one. Thank you. Your initial report. Okay. Um, thank you very mm -hmm. much. Thank you to everyone. Um, very quickly, as I reported to the Board of Selectmen on May 8th, I attended the Public Works Facility Groundbreaking Ceremony on Tuesday, April 30th. The event was very well attended, and um, we had a beautiful day. Nellie Sheehy joined us and put in the first shovel. So that project will be moving along very soon, quickly. Hopefully, we'll get everything in the market contract signed. Um, let's see, I presented on uh, May 8th, I'm sorry, May 9th, um, at the Woodbridge First Selectman Youth Award, they, they have a, an annual tea, a volunteer tea, and I presented the um, the award of the first Woodbridge First Selectman Youth Award to Max Ritchie, and um, the event also honored several other outstanding volunteers. And I guess there were about 135 volunteers thanked. We have a tremendous, tremendous volunteer support group in this town. You also mentioned the annual town meeting on Monday, May 20th, at 7:30. Um, Saturday, May 5th, I attended the annual installation um, of officers and dinner at the Woodbridge Volunteer Fire Association. It was a great evening, and they put on a very, very nice video showing all the wonderful things the fire department have done this past year, and um, we're going to try to get that video up on Gatbach right. so everybody can see what, what they did. Um, Mike is going to give a report on the fire commission because we were, we were tag teaming together on that one. Um, I don't know if you guys know about the Hearts. This is, um, there's a uh, 2013 American Heart Association's annual heart walk, and this year Woodbridge team is going to walk in memory of Ed Sheehy. So if you can't walk, you can donate. But it's uh, Saturday, June 1st at 10 a.m. registration and 11 o'clock start of the hot walk, heart walk, and it's at Seven Rock in West Haven. And I think that's about it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the A's are reports. Um, Go ahead, ahead. Sure, sure. Uh, <clears throat> the 27th of May, which is a Monday, is Memorial Day, and we will continue to have a ceremony at the VFW Monument. Uh, unfortunately, our VFW in town has gone out of business, so this is just going to be us since they, when they lost their charter. They had to merge with Bethany, so some of the VFW members that would normally be with us at that 
will not be here, they're going to be in Bethany. Uh, we have the pleasure of having Barry Josephs, who was a captain in the Army in Vietnam, 63 to 66 time frame. Barry's going to be the master of ceremonies because Gail and I had the good fortune to be in St. Louis for the high school graduation of one of the grandchildren. So you can't be in St. Louis and do that at the same time. So that's where we, we are there. We're looking for a good turnout. The other stuff will remain the same. We're uh, going to put out 50 chairs. We'll have the podium and the sound. And we will have the benefit of two guest speakers, our current first selectman and our first select lady uh, elect. And also Senator Grisco and possibly Representative Clarence. That's where we are. Thank you. All right, as far as uh, Amity is concerned, um, <clears throat> we had a meeting Monday night and there wasn't really a whole lot, but I guess the biggest item that caught a lot of people's attention is that they are going to be going to referendum to um, replace the uh, football field, the natural grass football field with artificial turf. Um, I have here a, what they gave us, which is a whole report about the safety and the injuries and the infection risks and chemical exposures and the cost breakdown and et cetera, et cetera. But in a nutshell, um, I believe it's uh, not about $950,000, which they're going to bond, a uh, principal of 945000 And over 20 years, it will cost taxpayers $1,250,000. will be no debt payment in next fiscal year, which is 2013-14, and it will start in 2014-15. And again, this is subject to a referendum, um, which initially they were saying they're having a meeting, a district meeting, I believe, this coming Tuesday. And uh, if you wanted to go and hear about it, that's when you could go. And uh, the referendum they were talking about July 2nd, which didn't seem to be a popular time because of the holiday and all. So I don't know. I guess at the district meeting they'll decide when they're going to have this referendum. But um, in addition to the cost of 944000 there is an annual maintenance cost uh, of about 32650 which includes setting aside 30000 each year to replace the surface in 10 years. So it's about a $300,000 uh, 10-year uh, expense to replace the uh, carpet. Um, the annual cost, the estimate of a natural grass field is around 14000 So it is, uh, so in addition to the debt service, they would be adding $30,000 to their budget for, to be put aside in capital to replace the, um, to replace the uh, carpet every 10 years. So I, I'd be curious to see, I, I think the general consensus was there's a small group of people who uh, want this. The positives they talk about, of course, is the field is not a good field. It's always been a, uh, it's very wet up there. It's always been dangerous as far as ruts and all. This in addition would get a lot more use because now you could use it for girl soccer, boy soccer, football, youth football, boys lacrosse, girls lacrosse, there'd be a lot more sports that could use it as opposed to what they're doing now. So it would get a lot more use. Supposedly there might be some possible revenue and that they can rent it out for events, etc. cetera. But um, there's, a, there's a cry up there from a, a group of people that we should do this because many of, the, many of the schools that we play against have artificial turf fields. And it's really, the, it's really become more common than uncommon. Like I said, I, I, I've been up on that field when, when I was involved with youth football. By uh, middle of October, it's a mess. It's just it's very wet, doesn't hold the water, and uh, when they start using it, it starts getting chunked up. So it's something to consider, and, and you're going to get a chance to vote on it. When that's going to happen, I don't know. It seems like it's kind of a rush, July 2nd, but we'll decide that at the district meeting. So uh, that, was the, uh, that was the biggest thing that was decided. I've got relationship to that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how are they going to inform the public other than this meeting are they going to send something there was out? something in the paper the other day about a you know in the legal section about a district meeting i would guess it'll get publicized i, 
that's I mean, like an informational. I mean, that's a good that idea. Yeah. Won't there have to be meetings? Well, they're going to have a meeting. There's a district yeah. meeting Tuesday where it's going to be discussed and like like our like our budget hearing. Right. They're going to discuss it and then they're going to set a uh, they're going to set a date for the referendum, I think. Yeah. And, yeah. But. Um, but it, much like yeah. you know, yeah. Dr. Brady has sent out when there is a budget referendum. Yeah. What the budget is. He wouldn't you I'll, send uh, out some description. I'll, I'll, I'll send him over an email is. tomorrow to see how he's planning to. Uh, I think it'll get out there then. Okay. And do they want to do it now so they can do it over the summer so it's ready? No, I don't think it's. I don't think it's going to be done over the summer. Um, I'm not sure. It's not going to be ready for this year. I can tell you that. So I don't know when exactly. So then, started. why would they try to get it through in July? Well, that's a good question. Might be. <laughs> might mean, be. That doesn't make any sense. I'm trying to see if it says here um, when it's going to be. Let's see. It's their decision. Let's see if it's in here. Let's see. There it is. Let's see what it says here. And here are the key dates. Um, May 13th, board meeting, which they did have, it was recommended. May 15th, notice of public hearing posted in member towns and it was in the paper. May 21st, dist 21st, district meeting held to conduct public hearing and then a board meeting followed that. May 22nd, notice delivered to town clerks of member towns as to call of referendum. Uh, June 3rd, Town of Woodbridge Planning and Zoning, Acts of Connecticut General Statutes, and we're in bond sale. We're going to close on the bonds August 22nd. Um, I don't really say when they're going to start it, but so they, they're not going to be able to do it. They'll, they won't be able to play football this year. So I'm going to guess after football season, they want to have the money in place. Because if they do it, um, it just seems like they could rally a lot more support if they would do yeah. it once the kids are back at school yeah. in September. This is this is this is a uh, this is being run by a, a group of uh, people who want it. And the Board of Education is in favor of it, so uh, this we'll all have a chance to say it okay. at the referendum. All right, thank you. Whatever that is, but I've got a. Um, I, was, I was talking to Beth about it. I got a whole report here on um, health issues and so forth. Which, Somebody could run some time. Yeah, that would be helpful. Just send it off to send it right. off to everybody. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. The only thing I'd like to mention, I don't know where it is. Uh, we met, as we always do, um, the beginning of every month. We met with Beecher, Dr. Stella, Al Puglio, Tony's there. And, uh, where's, that, uh, where's that thing? In? What's hanging on the wall? Oh, it's hanging? Okay. If you could, I'd be nice to show you. They made a, um, they made a, uh, I guess, is it, is it a collage from the collage? Yeah. Collage? Yeah. Really nice. It's really a bed sheet. They gave one to Ellie. Ellie got one, right. So Supportive nice. education and so they forth. Did, yeah. They did too. I just want to show it to you. It's really yeah, nice. It's very, nice very nice. Leave it up there. Look at it. Well, it's a picture of Ed with all the kids. We it's thought a picture of Ed outside the, the tax office. The, everybody will be coming. The in. ribbon cutting I of think the uh, great taxes. Idea. And the great taxes. Put it on that seat. Yeah. 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 Okay. But of course, we got a picture of our infamous recreation director, John Adamovich, yeah. and mm -hmm. picture of Ed with the kids. Picture of Ed reading to the kids. It's really, it's really nicely done. So. Uh, it's a beautiful tribute. Yeah. Yeah. And beyond that, I guess that's I'm trying to think. Beth covered. I was at the uh, Public Works ground opening too, which was really nice. And uh, well, that's about it. Mike, you have anything? I do. Uh, the uh, Board of Fire Commissioners uh, met on Monday, April 29th. Um, and as we had discussed in a previous uh, finance uh, meeting, Board of Finance meeting, they have a number of uh, junior firemen joining the department and uh, just wanting to make us aware that it's going to lead to an overage in professional development, but they're uh, very excited about how healthy the uh, fire uh, department is at this point. Uh, in terms of special events coming up, uh, in conjunction with the police and AMR, the uh, fire department is conducting a mock car crash for educational purposes uh, at uh, Amity on May 16th. And on June 19th, our fire department will be hosting the uh, regional meeting of the fire commissioners and chiefs. 
Also, be glad to know that we uh, have our fire marshal in place. We're aware of that. He's working 28 hours a week, and we were happy to accept uh, a, a report from him that was uh, five pages long, uh, very detailed, and uh, he's, out, he's out there in the field. Okay. Uh, next meeting is this coming Monday. No, the town meeting. Uh, no, it's right before from, yeah, okay. from six. Yeah, okay. Okay. yeah. What is the status of the floor? I don't know. Uh, Did the let's come see. Um, there is something going on with the floor. There's, uh, they found a couple of bubbles. Right. Uh, not a big, very minor. Don't we have not a big deal. Complete, and there was a few more bubbles that. Okay, but only a couple. So we're just okay. going to watch at this point. See if it gets okay. worse, right? I think Newfield we're did come out and they took a look. Yeah. Right. We're hopeful that might be it. Okay. And there's okay. always something with the floor. Yeah. yeah. You can always. <laughs> sure. But it's not like the massive, you know, bubble, 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 bubble. Right. That, right. that they had to redo. Sure. So hopefully it's just something right. small. Okay. Yeah. We're going to keep our fingers crossed this time. We should leave that as a regular button. Regular. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Andrew, please. Commission met uh, first Wednesday in uh, May. A large portion of the meeting we were in executive session because of a lot of personal issues. Uh, some of the highlights to be addressed were uh, from they have uh, two officers on workman's comp and they have one officer assigned to Beecher School, which means they are down. They are down. They, they are in the process of hiring a new police officer. So, and that affects all the reports in terms of arrests, traffic tickets. So that, that whole category is, was lower this month than the last couple of months. Um, obviously, the FEMA money came in and it obviously helped their budget. It did. Yeah. It put them in the black because pay all their overtime. <laughs> right. Over overtime was paid. Uh, two new patrol cars have been delivered and they are both SUVs. And. Um, Basically, it. Basically, as far as you can tell, are they going to continue with the full-time officer at the school? My understanding is we talked about that Monday, and while he's at the school, he's ready to go if there's an emergency. It's yeah. not like he's so. I mean, when they say they, they're down, it's not like he's glued to the school. So if there's an emergency, he can leave and be on wherever he's got to be. I believe that whole that whole that whole thing is being is all well under. Yeah. Being studied, yeah. and a report is going to be generated, which includes security, includes what has to be done to the facility, yeah. entrances and egresses. So it's all part of that. And the same goes for the ambulance SRO. He, right. He's there, but God forbid there's a major accident. Or, he's out. He's out. So it's not. It's not that he's stationary in there. So he, he, that's pretty much where he's positioned. So and that's something to think about. Now they had come and made a request. To add you know, that was, positions to their budget. That was so wrong. Are they go, I, I understand yeah, that. Yeah. So my question is, have they gone back to the commission with yeah. that request? And is that what they're looking yes. at? Yeah. Okay. They are interviewing, and I believe they're interviewing one individual now. A, 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 no, no they, a, they had asked for There's action. actually a vacant position in the police department because somebody has retired. Right. That's a different issue from adding new positions. Which is new yeah. Have they brought that to the commission, adding yeah. additional positions? Yeah, it was, that was discussed that night. Yeah. Absolutely. That was the union. That was the head of the union. <laughs> and I, he came before us, and I probably should have stopped him and said, you really don't, shouldn't be presenting it to us. You should be presenting it to the police commission. Right. Police commission presents the board of selectors. <clears throat> from, uh, right. In courtesy of the, to the gentleman, I let him speak. But I think there's a lot more that has to go into that. So as long as you're there, Sandy. Do you like to continue? Sure. <laughs> um, the Library Commission met on Monday, and actually Ellen attended as well. I think that was uh, very nice of you. People really appreciated that. Um, there has been a restructuring of the Friends of the Library. I had shared with you the problems they were having before. And what they've decided to do is that um, they're going to go down to a very skeletal group, but anybody who would like to join and participate um, is welcome. They're going to have six meetings per year, um, the third Tuesday of um, the month, and it'll be every other month starting in September. And that will allow them to continue to do the fundraising component of the library, depending
depends on, um, they may or may not continue to sponsor, um, you know, lectures uh, seven times a year. But if anybody is interested, they can um, either talk to me and Von Baden or let Todd um, know the library director and he will ask more. Um, Todd actually uh, went to the um, uh, Innovative User Group Conference in Seattle um, as the president of Lion, and they covered this um, trip. Um, but uh, he did really learn a lot in terms of improving tech support. Um, the group that they work with right now, the Interlibrary um, Association, uh, is expanding to Europe, and so they're actually going to be expanding the type of tech support that they provide to libraries. And this will be a real help, I think, to all of the Lion uh, groups, which is great. And Todd has decided that he's going to take the lead on um, working with Access 360, which is another um, e-books provider. And so he and I think there's one or two other libraries are going to really kind of step out of line there and really try to um, get this other vendor um, into the library systems um, so that they will, the libraries will have access to more ebooks at a lower price. Um, so I really applaud his efforts to do that. Um, the library programs uh, continue to be really a huge success. They had a science tellers program on April 16th and they had 60 people attend, um, you know, kids and adults combined. Um, they're still continuing to run their um, community adult programs. Um, 156 people actually attended six different programs. There were also four um, adult films that were shown. 133 people attended those. So I think they're really appealing to you know, lots of different groups in the town. Um, May uh, is the art exhibit month for Amity High School. And I would encourage everybody to go see the wonderful art that our students are producing. It's really a wonderful exhibit. Um, there will be a recommendation at the next meeting uh, about a donations policy. Um, there was an issue of someone wanting to donate money and requesting that there be a plaque um, that would be exhibited on the wall for that. So this really prompted a review of how does the library accept donations and how do they really so hopefully next month I'll come back with that information. And then the um, Woodridge um, Board of Ed Finance Committee meeting met um, on Monday as well. And um, their ending balance now is projected to be um, $35,415, which you saw in the report. And it's actually $25,000 higher than last month related to changes in health insurance. And they have open enrollment, so it's constantly changing. So when um, you know, their enrollee situation changes in terms of number of people in their family, et cetera, um, you know, the, the amount that's paid fluctuates. So if you recall, um, they have $246,000 worth of um, expenses that have been approved from their anticipated coverage. And so there's $35,000 left remaining in and um, what they really, what Dr. Stella would like to do with that is to um, pave the um, North Playground. And the PTO is willing to donate some money to kind of match what's needed to do that. So that will have to go for approval to the full board. Um, but that's how they would like to use the money. Um, they went through the, um, the budgets basically for um, extended day um, for the summer, and there's a lot of great program ideas um, that will be shared when they advertise um, those um, that particular program. Uh, lots of different learning labs around poetry, drama, science, and the ones that really take off for the kids, they will want to continue throughout the year. Um, the the this, this, um, SEP programs, um, which are the enrichment programs, um, those have already um, been identified for the summer, and that brochure has actually gone out um, to the community. And there was a thought of really trying to combine, for the sake of the residents, all of these into here are our summer programs between rep, 
extended day, and um, the staff programs. And so that the residents get a sense of here are all the offerings, pick and choose what you want, instead of trying to identify the three different um, groups uh, to pay differently, to sign up differently, and so next year they're really going to try to look into um, coordinating that. And that's pretty much it. Oh, one more thing. Um, our school lunch program received some state funding, and we were the first program to be audited by the state. And um, they gave us great compliments on our salad bar and how we actually <laughs> presented um, the food for the kids. And um, they were very happy about that. So they want to communicate to all the town employees that they should come over and get their salads at lunchtime. <laughs> That's okay. it. Thank you. <laughs> Is there anything else? Okay, our next meeting, of course, Monday night, let's make sure we all get there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then our next meeting, I believe, is June 20th. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. With that, I'll uh, make a motion that we adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Have a good Memorial Day, everybody.